Hello, and welcome to the Far Far Range. This is Slime Rancher. What is Slime Rancher? Well, the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's almost illegally adorable. And that's really mostly down to, of course, the extremely colorful, just happy looking, really kind of Saturday morning cartoon-esque art style. And by that I mean everything is stylized, everything is colorful to the extreme, everything has a face. It's really, really cute. And this style pervades pretty much the entire game. I mean, look at these. These cube berries. They're cubed berries. Yes, they sort of look like strawberries, but they're like plasticky cubes. Everything has this sort of personality to it. Uh, I love it. And, uh, well, Slime Rancher is a game where you ranch slimes, unsurprisingly. And you are uh, tasked with basically avoiding too many Harvest Moon comparisons while taking a look at this game on YouTube. But I'm probably going to fail at that and make some Harvest Moon comparisons because this game does have some parallels to that and some other similar games. Let's be honest. And although it is certainly not Harvest Moon, I think the, the comparisons are obvious and I will have to make them at some point, so we might as well start with them. Somewhat like Harvest Moon, <clears throat> you have a ranch given to you, or a farm, that is pretty open and empty at first, and you are expected to just kind of do what you will with it at first, and uh, grow it how you wish. You know, you'll have some basic supplies and just instructions to make money and live, and you'll have to do that. And as you get larger and larger and make more and more money and unlock fancier things and upgrades and all that, you will be able to expand and make the game more difficult for yourself if you so choose by attempting to make more money more efficiently or make the game less difficult for yourself by just being kind of chill and efficient and uh, going a little more of an easier path. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. But what we have here is the basic part of my ranch. And this is what you'll start with. It's just a a nice little place, and you have these uh, these plots here, and you can activate the plots to make lots of chicken noises, and the plots will start off empty, and you can use your money, called new bucks by the way, oh my god, they're so freaking cute, to buy various things to do, I suppose you could just say. So you'll start off with one of these, just a basic corral, which you can put slimes in, and you can buy other things like gardens, which is what I have up here, for instance and uh, coops, which is where all those chicken noises are coming from. And with these gardens, for instance, you will actually uh, have to fire in a piece of fruit or a vegetable to tell it what to grow, and it will then grow that continuously. So this one I have carrots, because I need something that grows fairly quick and has a high harvest rate to feed the number of pink slimes that I have. Pink slimes are the basic ones. And every slime has a diet, so pink slimes are your basic, everyday slimes, and they eat absolutely everything, and they're also very, very cute. Hi there. You've also got things like the tabby slimes over here, which need food very badly. Uh, tabby slimes are cat slimes. They shake their butts before they jump, and they'll boop you on the nose, and they like yarn balls. So that's all you need to know. And they are carnivores. So despite how cute they are, they have quite the voracious appetite. And coops work in an interesting way. You actually have to keep the coops from getting too cooped up. Bad joke. And basically, if it has more than a dozen creatures in it at any given time, it will stop producing eggs. They get uh, they get too too cramped and they can't produce any more eggs. So you got to keep count. Make sure there's not more than twelve of any given thing in here, because eventually the rooster is here and the hens. If you let it go too long, will actually stop the age up, and they will get too old to produce. So you don't want that to happen. To keep it running efficiently, you need to go in here and make sure you're harvesting, we'll call it, the uh, meat resource, <clears throat> the hens, at a reasonable pace to keep it empty enough to have more uh, capacity. And also don't do that, because that's really dumb. Enough capacity for... Oh, that's because I have normal hen hens in there. So, I should explain this. Favorites. Every slime has a favorite. A type of food that they prefer to eat. 
They will eat any type of resource that has what they like, so these guys will eat any type of meat, but they prefer stony hens above anything else. And the difference is, when they eat something, of course, they drop a plort, and this is what the game is really about, you could say, because this is how you make money. Plorts are... Uh, it's not slime poop, thank you very much. It is crystallized essence of joy. That's what we'll call it. And... Oh, got a lot in here. And, uh... You gotta, you gotta make them plorts, and to make them plorts you gotta feed them slimes, and if you give them their favorite, they will actually pop out two plorts instead of just one, so you can basically double the efficiency of any amount of slimes you have. Oh, poor guy. You'll eat soon, I promise. I put a bunch in there. By feeding them their favorites constantly. Of course, pink slimes don't have a favorite, because they're just like that. Now, these are phosphors. They also have a toy. Toys, um... Basically, what toys do is they actually make slimes less aggressive. They help give them something else to do, and give your slimes a a boost to their, I guess you could say, their mood. And every slime has a favorite toy. It's generally themed to what they actually are. So the kind of firefly-esque phosphors, they like a nightlight, and they won't stop jingling it around. There's one type of toy, however, that works a bit differently. There are these guys over here, the Puddle Slimes, which are just really cute. They're very shy, and they don't really have any sort of aggression or or agitation like other slimes do. They just like to chill in, in water, and you don't have to feed them at all. They just produce plorts in regular six-hour intervals. That's just what they do, and they're worth quite a bit, actually. However, you can only have four of them in one pool any more than that, and they'll blush like that, and they won't produce any more. However, their toy is a rubber ducky, which first of all is really cute, and they'll squeak it, and it's adorable. But not only that, they will also... that will allow them to have a fifth slime around them instead of just four to produce more, so it's like it makes them a little bit more social. Now this is the plort market. This is where you go at the end of the day to ship your plorts, basically, if you're familiar with Harvest Moon. This is where you put them to get your money, and as you can see, every plort has a value, and some arrows next to it that show this is actually a really good day to ship, because every plort has a value going up. Different days will affect the values. Every plort has a basic value, and it can fluctuate up or down depending on the day. So there are some days you may want to hold off selling particular types if you want to get the most money out of it. But today, everything is up, so sell, sell, sell. Sell in. All plorts. Rapid fire. I've actually got a lot of money right now. I need to start spending it on the blueprints and things. There is also, uh... A bit of an expansion process, so you can find other areas of your ranch to expand. You saw a bit of the, um, the grotto over there. It's a cave. And you also have this overgrowth area here, where you can have even more types of slimes. And there are lots and lots of slime types. I do not have them all, but I'm trying to get, uh, like, at least some of every slime. But some of them get very difficult to keep, like quantum slimes, for instance, because they can teleport straight out of your corrals, which is not very nice. But they can do it. That was a very good day to sell. Another thing to note is that these plorts can actually be used for other purposes, like uh, crafting, essentially. Got some honey slimes over here. They really like these mint mangoes. And if you're wondering where you actually go to get all of this, well, I would like to show you some exploration in a moment as well, because, of course, you've got to go out into the wild to find these slimes and then suck them up and bring them back to your ranch if you want to actually keep some of them, as well as finding all of their favorite foods and growing them here and stuff like that. You actually have to go out into the wilderness if you want to get any of this stuff. And now let me show you my very dangerous slime pen here, where I keep uh, the more difficult ones. I don't want a honey plort sticking out in the open because slimes will go out of their way to try and eat those. I'll explain that in a minute as well. Now we go out here, and down to here on the docks we've got some more puddle plorts. <laughs> with a ducky. Over there in the corner. Being all cute. 
And we've got some of these guys. So these are crystal slimes. They can hop very high in the air, which is why this has been upgraded significantly. And they create damaging crystals on the ground. They like a specific type of food that is difficult to find. It's called an odd onion. It's difficult because you can't grow it directly. It grows in carrot patches. And uh, only in like a random chance can you find it. And even when you actually start to grow it yourself, as you can see here, it still grows in a carrot patch. And only some of the crop will be devoted to onions. And these are rad slimes. These are radioactive slimes. They're a bit more chill. They tend to kind of not hop around too much, but if you get too close to them, you build up radiation and start growing like a third nipple, maybe an extra arm or two, and you really want to not be close to them for very long. However, they like taters, so have some taters. And then once you have fed them and harvested some delicious plorts, I can also show you a bit of the upgrading. You may have noticed that there's a bunch of stuff attached to each of these corrals. These, of course, are not there all the time. These corrals have things like double the height so that they, these slimes can jump around without falling out of them. This particular corral here has a net on top so that they can hit the net and not fall because I don't want them escaping. And they, uh, this one has, these two have uh, plort vacuums that I can just press this button to auto vac up any plorts because I really don't want to walk in there myself and try and vacuum them up with my backpack for obvious reasons because look at that so now we're gonna go up and sell you can hear the rubber duck over there this is slime science or science as the experts call it you go over here and you've got several more plots four of them which i haven't used anything used them for anything yet and all of this nonsense so you can buy blueprints for things to build over here you can build the blueprints over here and this is where you put the ingredients in. You don't actually have the crafting ingredients in your inventory when you want to build something. You shoot them into here. But be careful because once you do put them in here, you can't get anything back out. So if I go over here, you can see all the things I can build and what it requires to be built. These are resource gathering nodes that allow me to go out into the world and put them in specific areas, different biomes that you can go into have different special things. So, for instance, the moss blanket is a mossy forest area. Put the apiary there and it gives you special things that it can only get there. And these get you special resources that you can use for other uh, gadgets. So, like these, the teleporters, which I almost have. I can actually make a pink teleporter now just if I go and grab some of this pink plort. So why don't I do that for you, actually? Because I have all of the other resources I need. Actually, I can make a blue teleporter literally right now. So... Let's do that. And a bunch of uh, decorations for decorating your uh, your ranch, making it look cool, which is really awesome, actually, that you can do that. And there's a bunch more than I currently have, obviously. There's a lot. And these are some of the other things that I can buy right now. But there's a lot more than this. You find a lot of them in treasure uh, containers around the world. So you may notice that it's not in my uh, tanks down here. That's because you actually have a separate inventory for your uh, gadgets. There's actually a gadget mode. You just press a button and you go into this mode. And as you can see, there are different places where you can put stuff. So I think, uh, given that it's a teleporter, I would like to put one side of the teleporter back here at home. And I have one of these. Install. There. Obviously it doesn't do anything yet, because it can't go anywhere. And then, I want to attach the other side somewhere where I, it's a little more difficult for me to get to. It takes a little bit longer. That way I have a quicker link back home. And that's how the gadget system actually works. Those resource gathering nodes actually take about 12 to 15 minutes to finish a resource gathering uh, step. And then you harvest them, and they will actually give you all the various things that you saw in the recipe for that teleporter. Like some of that stuff is actually what you get from those drills and pumps and apiaries and stuff. Now here we are in the wild. All these wild slimes run around doing stuff and these are Largos. This is what happens when a slime eats a plort that isn't its own kind. So they're hybrid slimes. Uh oh! And that's what happens when a Largo slime 
eats a third type of plurp that isn't one of its two types. That's a tar. And those are very dangerous. And these are one of the main kind of enemies of the game. You could say one of your main threats. Because they spread like a virus. Once they spawn, they will kill other slimes, sort of taking them into their bodies, and actually begin to convert that slime into another tar, and so on and so forth. And they can wipe out your entire ranch if this happens back home. And here's the cool part about the dynamic difficulty of this... Chicken in the box. Of this game. Uh oh Luckily, you can't hurt them with water, but you have to actually be around to do that. Keeping them under control can be a little difficult, or you can fling them into the sea. That's cool, too. So this game is a fantastic game, well, just in general, first of all, but it is a really good game for people that haven't necessarily played a huge amount of video games before. And I don't mean that as an insult to the game, of course, because it is a really good game on its own. In similar ways to games like Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, The Sims, games like that, Story of Seasons, they're games that people that love video games and are very familiar with lots of video game tropes and mechanics can enjoy, and yet people that have never played much of anything else but that can also get a lot out of, and that's down to the way that the difficulty works. You don't actually select a difficulty or anything like that, you just sort of make your own way through the game. And it's as hard as you want it to be, basically. You can have a ranch with just all pinks and tabbies and really basic, easy-to-take-care-of slimes and make your money slowly and reliably that way and have some fun. Or you can do what I'm doing and try and uh, create an area that's mainly filled with as many uh, big, uh, like, exclusive slimes as possible. So I have at least one of every slime in the game and its favorite food next to it so that I can feed it and get as much out of it as possible. Or you can try and ranch Largos and make actual corrals filled with Largo slimes and make a huge amount of money very quickly that way. Under the understanding, of course, that Largos are difficult to move around because unlike these slimes, which you can just do this to, to move around and put in new pins and stuff like that. There you go, sorry about that. Largos, you cannot move around that way. They are too big, they do not fit in your tanks. You can only move them one at a time, like this. Hi there. Here you go, I'll get you out to safety. And if a one of your Largos gets a hold of another plort from another pin or something, they get out then you have a full-on tar outbreak and they can sweep through your entire ranch and kill all of your slimes and potentially you. And you lose all of your income right there. And that kind of thing can happen. And uh, basically this is a game that's as difficult as you want it to be. And I think that says a lot about the general design and again that's a something very similar to games like uh, Harvest Moon, Story of Seasons, stuff like that, where it starts off pretty simple, and then it can get more and more complicated at the pace that you desire it to, if you want it to. Depending on what kind of player you are, what kind of gamer you are, you sort of decide what sort of difficulty that you want it to be, and how you want to play it. And I love that kind of stuff. And I think that's why games like this are so accessible, while also catering to just about every crowd out there. No matter how hard you like your games, or how simple you like them, You'll find something here, I think. And, uh... I really believe that games like this are just good for everyone. Oh! Ruins tree. I'll be making some of those, those are pretty. Now, this is a game where you can spend hours upon hours with a very simple ranch just decorating it, and, you know, ranching a few easy slimes, or just bending your brain over how to keep the maximum amount of favorite fruit and veggies available at all times to all of your slimes without missing any harvest so they don't rot, and keeping all of your Largos away from all of the other slimes with all the limited space that you have available. And everything in between. It fits pretty much all of those playstyles. That's pretty cool. And, uh, oh god, Quantums. I really want to know how to ranch those successfully, but I don't quite know yet. I'm still figuring it out. And the uh, plethora of upgrades for all of your different, I guess, building, you could say, types helps with that. A lot of customizability 
and speech is pretty sweet. You can do things like, as I mentioned earlier, you saw some of those corrals were double height, had gates. Some of them can be really dark, so that uh, slimes that can only live in the sunlight can live outside instead of in the grotto, so that you can free up grotto spaces for other things, like maybe more dangerous slimes, which is what I'm currently doing. You can uh, have your coops with like growing lamps and insects and things to make your insects grow quicker. Insects? What? Your chickens grow quicker. And uh, reproduce quicker. You can have sprinklers on your various crops to make them grow faster and you can have some fertilizer to make sure that the harvest is always as good as it can possibly be every time. And I mean, let's look at some of the crazy things that you have to do. Not only are these quantum slimes here, can they teleport? You can splash them with water, I think, to stop their teleportation sometimes. But yeah, they can teleport, but their favorite food is the phase lemon. How do you harvest a phase lemon? Well, this is the phase lemon tree. I can't get it. Well, what you have to do just to get one, and this goes for even if you have one at your own, uh, at your own house, by the way, your own house, your own ranch, is get another type of food. I'm not sure if it has to be fruit or if it can be a vegetable as well. And then shoot it through the tree in order to turn it into a lemon or to free a lemon or to do something of that nature. It's, you know, quantum mechanics, very complicated. So we're going to go over here, shoot this pogo fruit through this, and boom. Phase lemon. That's how you get one. You would have to do that every single time if you wanted to actually feed these quantum slimes their favorite food. So the more complicated slimes actually get really quite complex requirements for how they actually work and how they need to be managed if you want to use them. And that's what I'm talking about with how the game gets scalably difficult depending on how you want to play, because there's nothing forcing you to actually ranch those if you don't want to. But you totally can, and probably should, because look at them, they're really cute. But... I can't remember how to get up on out of here. Probably the stairs that go up would be a good decision. But yeah, and also the, uh, the world itself is beautiful. The soundtrack is also really relaxing and goes along with the world very well. And I haven't actually explored the entire world yet because you've got things like the dry reef, you've got the uh, indigo quarry here, you've got the moss blanket, and you've got the ruins, and then you've got this. I think this is called the glass desert, and I don't know how to get here. I think it may have something to do with this, because I just uncovered this, and there's a door in front of it. Uh, that I haven't unlocked yet. I'm wondering if maybe that's how I get here. I should explain, there are these things called Gordos, Gordo Slimes. They're giant slimes. Oh, hi there. And uh, they're stationary. They, they can't move at all. Put the other blue teleporter here. There we go. Now I can get back and forth here a lot quicker. There we go. I feel like I'm making progress. And, huh. The Gordo Slimes you find in different parts of the world, stationary, and you have to feed them a bunch of their type of food. They're giant versions of slimes that you've already seen before. And uh, their favorite type of food will be whatever the type of food that the normal versions like is, but you have to feed them a lot of it. And if you feed them enough, they'll burst. And if they burst, they'll turn into a bunch of the smaller versions of that slime, as well as, I bet it's that, as well as um, creating some crates to burst, which you've seen contain random treasures and sometimes rare slimes and resources and stuff. And they'll usually be hiding either a teleporter or a key, uh, a slime key. And slime keys are... It is. Generally speaking, what you use to unlock new areas. Uh, a lot of these areas are blocked off to you until you have a slime key to actually unlock the door to them. So you need to f explore the areas. There's a big exploration component to this game 
and then find some of these special slimes, burst them, get the slime key to make more progress. This place is really pretty. I almost wish I would have put a teleporter like here instead, but oh well, we live and learn, don't we? I guess there is the one-way teleporter back home there. And I think this is where I'm looking for. This is where I think you go to get to the desert, but I'm not positive on that. Because if I remember correctly, down here is... A hallway. Yeah, there it is. This is a slime door. You need a key. And I have precisely zero of those, so I need to find a another Gordo slime. So yeah, that's Slime Ranger. It is... It's a phenomenal game. It is really fantastic. It does everything it sets out to do very, very well. And uh, I would say, personally, that it's something you absolutely should not miss out on. It's really cute in every possible way, but it will not... It, it's not just a casual game. It will appeal to pretty much everyone that uh, likes this sort of thing. And the sense of progression that you get from going back and forth getting upgrades, getting new slimes, making money is fantastic, and the pacing is really, really great in that regard. So yeah, Slime Rancher. And by the way, all of this is indeed available for uh, $20, which is not a lot, I would have to say. So give it a shot, and uh, see what you can do. See what your ranch is like, and personalize it for yourself, and be happy with it. It is relaxing or hectic, or maybe somewhere in between. And that's pretty special. Slime Rancher. Everyone available right now on Steam. Of course, out of early access now. Very successful early access. Did a lot of good for the game. And the link is in the description below this video for you to check it out. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, pass them my way. Feel free to share this video around or ask uh, whatever you wish. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.